The billionaire entrepreneur Elon Musk's brainship startup is preparing to launch clinical trials in humans. Musk, who co-founded Neuralink in 2016, has promised that the technology will enable someone with paralysis to use a smartphone with their mind faster than someone using thumbs. Let me show how. Elon Musk's brain implant company Neuralink is the billionaire entrepreneur's venture into an experimental medical industry known as Brain Computer Interface or BCI. And in the six years since Neuralink was founded, there has been massive progress generated in the field of BCI. Some of that coming from Neuralink themselves with their work implanting devices into pigs and monkeys, including one now infamous monkey who can play Pong using nothing but his thoughts thanks to the digital telepathy enabled by BCI technology. And now, the next generation of brain-computer interface is going to human trials for the first time in the United States. However, the first BCI procedure to be approved by the FDA is not going to be a Neuralink. It's a device called the Stentrode from a competing private company called Synchron. And knowing our usual audience, some of you might find that news upsetting. But I'm going to quickly turn that around and say that this is a great thing for literally everyone, Neuralink and Elon Musk included, because competition is the best thing to push an industry forward. Strong competition and a variety of products on the market will accelerate innovation and new discoveries. So let's get into the current state of the BCI industry and how Neuralink fits into the broader picture. So, obviously when Neuralink was founded in 2016, there was a ton of fanfare and media attention around the company, and that was due entirely to the person behind the project, Elon Musk. The news lit up with stories about how Elon Musk was going to put implants in people's brains that would cure all diseases, make you smarter, let you control a computer with your brain, and even interface with an artificial intelligence to become a human-machine hybrid super being. It was all a bit extra, but that's just how things go with Elon. He doesn't have a filter, he just says all the wild, fantastical things that are in his brain and the media reports it. So Elon Musk did not invent the brain-computer interface. It's been around for a surprisingly long time. The only problem is that between the year 2016 and the mid-90s, there's been virtually zero progress made at improving the methodology and implementation of BCI. So that's where Neuralink comes in. It's a modern approach to an existing technology doing the exact same thing that Tesla did for the automotive industry. They didn't invent the electric car, but they did package that technology into a product that worked exceptionally well and solved a problem that was inherent with the previous design. The concept behind the brain-computer interface is pretty simple. Your brain is essentially just a ball of soggy electric meat and it controls the rest of your body by generating specific electrical signals and then firing them out through your nerves and into your organs and muscles. Those electric pulses are like the programming language of the human body. Your brain is sending command prompts through your spinal cord, but sometimes that connection between the brain and body gets broken, either by a physical injury or degenerative disease. So, BCI can function like a bridge for those electrical signals to bypass the broken connection. Existing BCI technology can be split into two philosophies, invasive and non-invasive. You've probably seen non-invasive BCIs. It's like a weird hat with a ton of electrode sensors all over it. This can read the electrical signals from the brain, but it doesn't do a very good job. There's an entire skull in between the sensors and the neurons. so it's no surprise that it isn't very effective. It's like trying to listen to a concert from outside the arena. You might get the thump of the bass notes, but you won't hear the vocals. So to get a good connection to the brain, we need to go invasive with our BCI, and that's where things get 
gruesome. The current industry standard for invasive BCI is something called the Utah Array. It's a square computer chip with a whole ton of spikes coming out of it. I'll give you one guess where those spikes are going. Yeah, into the brain. So what they do is cut out a chunk of your skull, spike the Utah Array into the outer layer of your brain, and then attach a miniature computing device directly onto the top of your head that connects to the array on one end and has a giant wire coming out the other end. Typically, they will have to do this twice. So you'd have two spikes in the brain and two computer boxes with wires coming out the top of your head. It's brutal, but very effective. The spikes can quickly and easily read the electrical signals from the cortex region of the brain, which are then read by the computer and translated into computer code. And that process allows a person with the brain implant to control an electronic device with their brain. They can control a robotic limb like it was their own arm, or control a computer to move a mouse or type on a keyboard. The downside to this method is that it is limited to use only in medical research environments. People can't go about their lives with all of this stuff coming out of their heads. They can't even maintain this in their own homes. Also, because the Utah Array is just a bunch of tiny nails in the surface of your brain, the body is going to want to reject that foreign object. It's going to get inflamed and form scar tissue around the puncture that will eventually render the device useless. So, now we enter the next generation of BCI technology, currently being led by startup companies like Neuralink and Synchron. Like we said off the top, Synchron is the first to reach full human trials. They initially began testing in Australia with a group of four patients receiving their BCI implant. Apparently, Australia has looser regulations about what you can put into people's brains, and just last year, Synchron was given the go-ahead by the FDA to commence human testing in the United States. The first US patient just received their stentrode implant and will be the first of six people involved in the $10 million study funded by the National Institutes of Health. To understand why Synchron crossed the threshold before Neuralink, we can look at the design of their implant. The stentrode is named after a common medical device called a stent. This is just a long, thin, flexible tube that doctors can insert into a patient's blood vessel. Stents are used all the time for a number of procedures, mostly involving the heart. If you have a blocked or narrowed artery, the doctor will insert a stent tube to hold it open for you so that blood can flow and you don't have a heart attack. So, the stentrode is actually what it sounds like, a stent combined with a cluster of electrodes. The Synchron procedure is to insert the stent with a catheter into the patient's jugular vein and run it all the way up into a blood vessel that is nestled within the motor cortex of the brain. When they pull back the catheter tube, the hollow wire mesh of the stentrode will expand out and interface with the walls of the blood vessel. And the wire at the other end of the stentrode is connected into a very small computer device that is implanted inside the patient's chest cavity. If this sounds at all familiar, that's just because this is virtually the exact same procedure as implanting a pacemaker. They're just running the wire into the brain instead of into the heart. The implanted computer device will then connect with the rest of the system via Bluetooth, either paired to a computer or even just a smartphone. The beauty of the Synchron procedure is that there will be nothing sticking out of the person. There will be no visible sign that they have an implant in their brain. The system can be used anywhere. The surgery can be done in any hospital setting in just a couple of hours. And most importantly, there is no need to open the person's skull or damage their brain tissue. The first patient to receive stentrode in America is a person suffering from ALS who has no ability to move their body or even speak. Thanks to the Synchron device, this person is now able to use a computer and communicate by text just by thinking. The only downside to the Synchron is that it is only inside a blood vessel that runs through the brain. The electrode is not actually inside the cortex tissue and physically interfacing with the neurons. So the signal coming through the stentrode is limited. It can't match the bandwidth of the Utah array. So Synchron is definitely solving many problems, 
but they're still not creating a whole solution. And that is where Neuralink comes in. Their Link device brings the best of both worlds from the traditional Utah array and the modern Centrode, and they take that capability to an even higher level. So, much like the Utah array, the Neuralink does require the removal of some skull material. You're gonna have another hole in your head, unfortunately. But then, instead of just spiking a tiny bed of nails into the brain, Neuralink uses a robotic sewing machine to carefully and accurately insert incredibly fine and flexible electrode wires into the outer cortex layer. They just go in a couple of millimeters. And this way, the robot can place the electrode directly into the neuron that they want to read, going straight to the source, maximum bandwidth. And each Link device will have about a thousand of these tiny wires. So there is an absolutely massive amount of signal coming out of the brain. And then the computer device that's attached to the electrode wires is so small that it can fit perfectly inside the new hollow void of your skull and sit flush with the bone. That way they can just fold the skin back over and sew you up. Once the hair grows back in, there would be no visible sign that you have a computer in your skull that's hardwired into your brain. The same as the Stentrode, the Link device would pair via Bluetooth with a computer or smartphone that would read the signals created in the brain and translate them into computer commands. So, while the Stentrode uses a very familiar and well-tested medical procedure to handle the implanting of the electrodes, Neuralink is proposing an entirely unprecedented kind of robotic brain surgery. No one's ever had a robotic sewing machine stitch wires into a human brain before. And that likely means that Neuralink is going to need to present a very thorough and well-tested proposal to the FDA in order to gain their approval for human testing. We know that Neuralink are doing their current device testing in pigs and monkeys. We also know that this hasn't always ended well for the monkey. In many cases, the monkeys who were operated on were either previously deceased at the time of the operation, or were so near death that they were euthanized immediately after the procedure. Those monkey deaths were planned, and are a regular part of testing any medical device. In other cases, some monkeys did die because of infections or complications directly related to the Neuralink surgery. And that sucks, but that is how we learn new things about science and medicine, by first testing the idea on animals. So, I do want to say thank you to the monkeys for your sacrifice. I'm sure you would have preferred to not be killed by a brain implant experiment, but your death will not be in vain. So, as far as when Neuralink might begin their own human trials, we don't really know for sure. We know that this is something that they are actively working on with the FDA. Elon says that his company is committed to not only meeting, but far exceeding all of the safety standards involved with the trial. When asked, Elon said that he expects human Neuralink trials by the end of this year. He also said the same thing last year, but he's saying it again this year. He has to be right eventually, right? Like a broken clock kind of situation. Also, it's probably good to not be the first modern brain implant to go to human testing. There's going to be something that can be learned from the Synchron experience that can help make Neuralink better. Again, there's more than enough room in the industry to have multiple players. It's not like Neuralink should just quit because Synchron got ahead in the testing phase. And Synchron isn't useless just because it has a lower bandwidth connection. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people in the world with varying forms of brain injury and disease and they need all of the help they can get as soon as they can possibly get it. So, more BCI companies doing more real-world testing will always be better. Hopefully, that's opened up the world of brain-computer interfaces for you just a little bit. Elon and Neuralink might be the loudest and the flashiest, and they by far get the most attention, but there is a lot of really great technology out there that is going to help a lot of people. And that's awesome. Thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more videos from this channel. If you knew of any useful information on this topic, let me know in the comments below. 
And if you're new here, click on the subscribe button and notifications icon for more useful information and tips from the Curious Tube.